upside down and your life was never the same? How much has your life changed in the past five years? In the past three years? In the past one year? Hopefully you have a testimony that God is continuously changing you and you are less and less like your old self. Old ways of thinking, old ways of behaving, old sins that God has saved us from. Elijah wanted to embrace this new thing and make sure he had no exit plan. Elisha had no plan B. It's not like he said, well, you know, if this prophet thing doesn't work out, I could always go back, you know, because I got the equipment, and, you know, hey, Joe, I need you to take care of the cattle for me because I might be coming back in a, in a year or two. Think about for us as a church. Think about it. Are we embracing what God has for us? Or are we still making sure we have bridges to our old self of who we were? I love God is saying, it's not like those, some of those things were bad. Think about some of the things. There was nothing wrong with me being a high school student. There was nothing bad with me being just a dad and without kids. There's nothing bad. But when God is calling us to move forward, when God is challenging us to enter a new season, those old things no longer are tools for this new season. Those old things are old things. Notice how Elijah didn't say, um, man, Elijah, I'd love to go with you, but can I still take like my plow and my oxen? Is that okay? Can I do that? You know, it just makes me feel so comfortable because it just reminds me of just who I was. It reminds me of who I, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 10 years ago, one year ago, those things were just so handy to me. Is it okay if I take these things along with me? Look at when Jesus called the disciples. Imagine the convincing that they must have had to know the new season that they were about to enter to literally just drop everything and embrace everything that Christ had for them. For us as a church, it's so important. It's monumental to the movement of where we're going as a church and trying to reach this region to embrace what God has for us and the wisdom to recognize the old bridges and the potential downfalls there are to saying, hey, some of the stuff, it was good. It was great. But it's not for this new season. It served a purpose. It had its time. But let's move on and embrace what God has for us. You don't want to burn out. You don't want to quit. You don't want things to get stale. There's something inside of me when I think about a believer and I see that they are no longer excited about the things of God. It's just become commonplace. Guys, there is such excitement when it comes to serving a living God, a God who is alive, a God who is wanting to breathe passion and joy and wanting us to move forward. So let me close with this. What's that new thing that God is calling you to? For our graduates, it might be this new season of new responsibility. You're going to be able to make a lot of choices that maybe you weren't able to make on your own that were made for you. But now, you're going to be given the freedom to make choices of what you're going to do with your time. Are you still going to connect with God? What are your thoughts going to be? What are your plans going to be? For you, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, what's that new thing that God is calling you to? Maybe God is calling you to get rid of some of the old things in your life and start embracing something new. For us as a church, what is God calling us to? I don't know about you, but I feel such a stirring. And that was one of the things that so much attracted me to this church and why I felt like, God said, this is your home. Because I felt like that we are a church that's on the brink of something new, something great. And God can't force us there. We have to be willing to embrace it. And 
what bridges do we have to burn to move forward? Could you imagine if David continued to think like a shepherd when he was a king? Can you imagine what the New Testament would sound like if Paul would have, wouldn't have stopped thinking like Saul? Could you imagine where the gospel would be if the disciples wouldn't have left everything to follow Christ? What God has ahead of you is so much better than anything we've experienced so far. If you think that what you've experienced so far, whether it be your job, your marriage, your kids, those things are great, but I really believe what God has collectively for you and for us as a church, it's so much better. And I want what God has new for me. Scripture says that God is new every morning. Every single morning, God, let me be challenged. God, what's that new thing you have for me this morning? What new can I learn about you? God, I don't want to live off of the crumbs from yesterday, but I want to move forward to what you have. Our challenge is this. Let's be committed to be like Elijah and move forward no matter what the cost. I cannot imagine what it would be like for God to ask me, God, Rob, I need you to leave everything, everything, your family, everything you know to follow me. For some of us, that's not what he's asking us. He's just asking us to just burn some old bridges. That if you really, really want what I have, you can't think like that anymore. You can't live like that. You can't behave like that. I have something new for you. Let's be challenged to move forward. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God, we come before you, and we thank you so much because of who you are. God, I thank you, God, that you are a God that is continually challenging us and encouraging us to move forward. God, you are moving us to a place we've never been, to experience things we've never experienced. God, may we be people committed to moving with your spirit, like Enoch. God, he was blessed because he moved with you. God, I thank you so much for every person here and the plan you have for their lives. God, I pray that you would stir something inside of them, stir something inside these graduates, stir something inside of us as a church, God, that we would be committed to moving forward and being more like you. God, being from glory to even more glory. I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to just challenge us to stand to our feet. And as we close out with this, with this song, um, let us be stirred to worship God and maybe a way you've never ever worshiped him before I pray that you would leave here more encouraged more challenged than when you walked in but really the, re the reality is is that it's, it's, it's about him it's not about the changes we make it's not about our strategies and stuff to reach this area the reality is it's about him and that's what worship's about amen amen, amen.
just, just as a reminder, we are going to begin our congregation meeting in just a few minutes after worship. So if you need to go get a child from the nursery, if you need to go use the restroom, you may do that. But please invite you to come back so we can begin our meeting in just a few minutes after worship. The graduates, you're going to go ahead and you're going to be dismissed to go downstairs to the fellowship hall so you can get set down there. So parents, if you want to go see them, you are certainly welcome to do that. But I want to invite Pastor Rob to give our parting blessing this morning. Jesus, we just come before you and we thank you so much for these graduates and all the hard work that was represented there. We ask God that you would bless them. God, I pray for the word that went forth today. I pray, God, that those things would take root. And if there's some of us here that are just uh, dealing with uh, those, just those old bridges to who we used to be, God, that you would help us move forward. God, let today just be soaked in just how amazing you are and what a good God you are. And we give it all to you. Just be with us and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.